there, this is Ryan George from The Thing You're Currently Watching. As I'm recording this, we are on the cusp of the release of Madam Web, a movie, a cinematic experience, really, that's set to rival the likes of Morbius as a movie that exists. So since I'm going to be diving into the pitch meeting for that for next week, I figured this week would be a good time to revisit the pitch meeting for Fifty Shades of Grey. So please enjoy that and then stick around after that because I'm going to talk about it and stuff. And while you're doing that, I'm going to drop Madam Web. So, you have a book adaptation for me. Yes, sir, I do. It's called Fifty Shades of Grey. And what's it about? Well, it's kind of like porn, but with a lot more character stuff that's very slow-paced. Okay. That's it? Basically, yeah. Can I get some more details? Oh, uh, they're not really that important. Okay, but I'd like to hear more, though. Okay, well, the main character's name is Anastasia Steele. Did you get that from one of those stripper name generators? I did. Those are fun. They are. I put my name in there and it said Harry Ramrod. Hilarious. So this character, what's her deal? So she has to interview this billionaire named Christian Grey. All right. And he kind of instantly falls madly in love with her. So she's like super sexy with a great personality. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, no, her entire deal is that she's very, very plain. So, you know, our target audience could identify with her. Interesting. Nope, not interesting. Right. Anyway, we're gonna find out that Christian is into BDSM. Oh, well that is interesting. You'd think so, but pretty much the entire first movie is him trying to get her to sign a contract. Well, first movie? There, there's more than one of these? Yeah, it's a trilogy. Wow, what are the other ones called? Well, the first one is called Fifty Shades of Grey. Right. And so the second one is called Fifty Shades Darker. Oh. And so the third one is called Fifty Shades... Uh? Freed. Oh, what? It just seemed like you were gonna do something clever there. It did, didn't it? But then it was just, it was just nothing, yeah. Hmm. So anyway, Christian's gonna be a weird, possessive stalker kind of guy. And she's gonna come to realize that he's kind of a monster. No, she's gonna be really into it. Oh, she is. Yeah, and by the end of the movie, she's gonna agree to do the full BDSM stuff. Okay. And then she's gonna get mad because he did the full BDSM stuff. Okay, so she breaks up with him? She does, and that's basically how the first movie ends. Wow. So in the second movie, they're gonna get back together and try to have a normal relationship. It's just gonna be about a man and a woman that are in a relationship? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, I mean, I guess that sounds like a standard romantic comedy. Yeah, kind of, except it's not gonna be romantic or funny and none of the characters are interesting or even likable for that matter. That sounds kind of boring. It does, but I did spice things up by throwing some random bullshit in there. Random bullshit. Yeah, like at a certain point, Christian just crashes his helicopter in the middle of a forest. Oh, that is pretty random, right? And we're gonna see him struggle to get back home. Actually, no, that's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Really? Yeah, he's just gonna show up back home and then we're never gonna talk about it again. Wow. We're also gonna have Anastasia's boss randomly try to rape her. Oh my God. Yeah, and he's gonna stalk them like the whole movie. Kind of like Christian did. Yeah, but this time Anastasia's not into it. Gotcha. So this guy's gonna have snuck into a masquerade ball at the Grey Mansion, taken a picture of a family picture, printed out that picture, and then later burned it with a cigarette because he's angry. That seems overly complicated. Oh, very much so. Seems like he could have just printed a picture of Christian from the internet and put a cigarette through that. Could have, yeah. Or, you know, not done that at all. Also a possibility. Huh. Then there are a couple of characters that are mad that Christian isn't sleeping with them anymore. And that brings us to the third movie. What happens in that one? Well, they're married now, so they go on a honeymoon. Right. So... Yeah. Okay. I mean, again, it seems like there's not much going on story-wise. Yeah, there's not. So... I threw some random bullshit in there. Oh, you did? Yeah, the characters that are mad about not being the sexual partners of the protagonists are gonna come back in like the last 10 minutes of the movie. Wow. And that's it. That's it. What do you think? Well, I mean, they say sex sells, so let's put that theory to the test. Great. There she is. She's looking pretty good, if I do say so herself. She's, she did her makeup. She's got a little bow in her hair. Well, she doesn't have hair, but she's still looking good. Were you expecting me to draw Dakota Johnson? I would never. So that was actually the 14th pitch meeting I ever made. You could tell it's old because of the slower delivery. Nothing in that video was tight. There's a joke to be made there, but I'm not gonna find it right now. I didn't remember that I covered all the Fifty Shades movies within this one four minute video. I guess that's how unimportant they felt to me. I guess I was like, the don't each deserve their own pitch meaning, but maybe that would be funny to do. 
Uh, but I, ah. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but this pitch meeting feels a little more mean spirited than what I usually do. To be fair, though, I had just had to sit through two Fifty Shades movies, so I was probably a little upset. I'd already seen the second one, so I didn't have to rewatch that. Just the second one, though. That's... I'll explain later. Part of me does want to redo these movies as individual pitch meetings, but they're also a little tricky to cover, I think, because, well, I guess I hadn't yet exactly decided on this back then, but I do like to make my videos a little more family friendly. I'll do the occasional bleep swear word for the sake of surprise, and obviously executive guy, I have him say just disgusting things, but innuendoily? which is a word, but I'm very aware that a lot of people watch these videos as families with their little kids and it just doesn't feel necessary to be super vulgar, so I don't really do it. The subject matter of these movies obviously makes that a little more difficult. Maybe I'll start a pitch meetings after dark channel. I probably covered all you actually need to know about these movies in this video, though it doesn't get much more complicated than what I mentioned. In the third movie, there is so much time spent on them honeymooning that it starts to feel like that channel in a hotel room where you just see an attraction active couple enjoying that hotel's amenities. Now here's the thing though, do I recommend watching these movies? It, listen, if you're just looking for a good movie to put on, no, no, not these ones. But in the right context, yes, absolutely. I went to see Fifty Shades Darker at the movie theater and it was one of the best times I've ever had at the movies. And not in a weird, gross way either. See, back then my friend Sam and Brandon and I on our channel, Moving Mind Studio, we had this podcast going. Really revolutionary concept. It was, hey, wh what if three guys had a podcast where they talk about movies? Truly a mind-blowing concept we stumbled upon. But anyway, for one of the episodes, we decided to go see the second Fifty Shades movie in the theater without having seen or really knowing anything about the first movie. And I have never laughed harder in a movie theater. The movie is so ridiculous and insane and bad that we, we were just cracking up the entire time. There is a long scene where he's just on a pummel horse for no reason. And not in like his red room or whatever, just straight up using a pummel horse that he owns. And it wasn't like we were the obnoxious people just laughing as everyone was trying to enjoy the movie. The whole theater was laughing the whole time. And it made me think, wait, is nobody actually watching this movie seriously? Cause if so, that's actually a really good time. So I do think if you get a little group of friends together and binge watch these movies, that could be a really fun time for you. In the same way that watching The Room is a fun time. Now back to the pitch meeting, another thing I noticed rewatching this now is there's kind of a reverse Easter egg in this pitch meeting for a future sketch on my YouTube channel. This moment right here. It did, didn't it? That specific phrase was kind of a joke that I would do with my friends and family for a few years before this. Anytime someone would say it did, didn't it? Not that that happens often, but anytime it would happen, it would turn into the, the Star Wars song. It did, didn't it, it did, didn't it, it did, didn't it. And so like several months after this pitch meeting, I made a sketch on my own channel, which was, I was still kind of starting out back then based on that kind of joke. It's like a therapy group for Star Wars addicts and they can't help but break into that song. It did, didn't it. What, what was that? It did, didn't it. <clears throat> it did, didn't it. It did, didn't it. You okay? It did, didn't it. 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 And I think making this pitch meeting is what re-sparked that joke in my memory and eventually inspired me to make that sketch. Okay, anyway, question time. Kind words and then, so I was wondering if you'd want to share any advice slash encouragement for new YouTubers that you wish you had gotten back in the day. I guess probably the main things would be be patient and make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. If you want to be a YouTuber because you want to be rich and famous, you're not gonna, that's not gonna get you through the late nights of editing that you have to potentially do. And it's not gonna get you through the probably years of making stuff and just throwing it out into the void and getting no response for it. I've been uploading onto YouTube since it started, since P Diddy said that he and Burger King partnered to buy a channel on YouTube. I don't know how many people are gonna get that reference. But for the first 10 years of me doing YouTube, I wasn't making money off of it. It wasn't my job. I was making a ton of videos because I loved to do it. So make sure you love the work because that's what's always gonna be there. You're always gonna have to do the work. So even if you do find success and you don't love the work, you're not gonna be happy 
happy. Kind words. When you meet someone in real life who's not a fan, what's it like explaining what you do when people ask? I think a lot of other creative professionals probably do this as well, but I think I have different stock answers depending on who I'm talking to. If I don't want to get into the ins and outs of what YouTube is and how it can be a job, I tell people I'm a videographer. If I'm talking to someone younger, I could say I'm a YouTuber and they'll know what it means. If I'm actually trying to explain, I'll say I'm a comedian and I do comedy videos online. I do sketch comedy where I play multiple characters. And if I'm getting really detailed, I need to explain. I do some, I do a thing called pitch meeting as on one channel. And then I have my other channel. That's not my name, Ryan George. And I do videos. So I do one video on each channel every week. It's not the easiest thing to explain. So I, sometimes I'm a videographer. Can you please list out the softwares you're using for editing a video? Double high five or whatever that is. Adobe Premiere. Kind words, and then any chance we could get more pitch meetings for older movies, or maybe a poll with a list of movies you're considering pitches for that people can vote on? While I appreciate the new releases, there are lots of movies ranging from the 80s to early 2000s that were my faves growing up that I would love to see pitch meetings for. So here's a thing that if you don't follow me on Instagram, you don't know, but I'm gonna be a dad pretty soon. That's scary to say out loud, but also exciting, and I wanna... I want to take some time off uh, to 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 be with my daughter. That's another weird thing to say. That I'll get there. It doesn't feel real yet. And so, because to take some time off, it's best for the uh, ever hungry YouTube algorithm that I continue to publish videos. I am trying right now to prepare some videos so I can have some time off. So there'll probably be a little chunk of time of a couple of months in spring summer where um, I won't necessarily be super fast on new releases. And I would love some suggestions for older movies that you guys would like to see me do pitch meetings for. What was your favorite cereal as a kid and do you still eat it today? Fruit Loops, no. 